anxious there this morning. Commander Steve Suters, USN Chaplain Corps, retired, will give the invocation. Let us pray together. Eternal Father, we gather together here today to give you thanks and to remember the entire crew of the USS Stark and their actions on that day in May of 1987. We particularly pay honor and tribute to those who were wounded and to the 37 sailors who laid down their lives. We give you thanks, O oh Lord, for their faithful resoluteness and persistence to their duty while, while serving their country. They were beacons of hope in troubled times by helping to keep the peace during those challenging days in that particular spring. We ask that you continue to grant your comforting presence and peaceful reassurance to the family and friends and shipmates of those who lost their lives as they stood to watch. Once again, we also pay tribute to the best ideals of naval service, honor, courage, and commitment. And now, O oh God, we invoke your everlasting presence to be with us during these moments as we honor the memory and dedicated service of our fallen shipmates. Amen. Our first speaker this morning is Rear Admiral Don Gabrielson. Mr. Bernard Martin. I am all over the place. Will you read this, uh, a scripture? this morning, please. Good morning. Uh, when I was asked to read the scripture this morning, I was told to summarize a few things that uh, had happened in my life since I had left the ship. So I sat down this morning and during my prayer time, uh, the Holy Spirit was dealing with me about the very same thing this uh, chaplain here was talking about, honor, courage, and commitment. So with that, I'll take just a couple of seconds of your time. Upon departing the start the morning of May the 17th, 1987, I must say my life has dr changed drastically since the attack. If anything, it has taught me the value of life. And it was not easy. I could have let it destroy me, but instead I chose to learn from the experience. It has driven me to always seek excellence in everything that I do. And it always has me to look for the best in life. No matter how bad your situation is, you have a chance to have the best in life if you have breath. You know, the USS Stark was my first family away from my blood family. Men who came from all walks of life in America. You know, the melting pot. To have served together, shared experiences, to form a bond we still today call our Stark family. It goes way beyond blood and DNA. Today my life is about trust, loyalty, and respect. And we still have these days all called the stark reality. Those of you there know it. But we can pull through. You know, our family is the foundation of our life, and I'm honored and humbled to have served with men of this caliber. And I want the Gold Star family members to know, the mothers, the fathers, and family members, and I will always share your pain. As the attack took your loved one, a part of me was ripped away also. Families are important, you are important. From the resulting attack, I have learned to live my life with certain fundamental relationships. I like to say that the Stark provided me with a family that we now have and a family that will be with me my whole life. And today my life is a life of living worthy of the sacrifice of my shipmates and to be a godly man, a man of duty, honor, courage, and commitment. And my Stark family has given the clear moral guidance of stepping up and getting squared away. 
and hard-fought battles of my shipmates to show love, to show compassion. We have been given a legacy to uphold, to never forget. And you today, under the sound of my voice, you are part of that special family and a bond that will never be broken. And as I have matured and gotten older, I rely on the qualities of self-sacrifice and looking out for each other in times of dire circumstances. As my shipmates exhibited that fateful night, May 17, 1987, to never forget and to live my life worthy of the honor, courage, commitment, and sacrifices of my shipmates. John 15, 3 says, Greater love hath no man than he lay down his life for his friends. Thank you. Our first speaker today, Rear Admiral Don Gabrielson. Rear Admiral Gabrielson is a native Minnesotan, Naval Academy graduate, 1989. He has commanded carrier strike groups, logistics groups, Aegis cruisers, and littoral combat ships. He has also been an aide to the Vice Chief of Naval Operations and has served as a Congressional Liaison Officer. Ladies and gentlemen, Rear Admiral Gabelson, Commander, U.S. Fourth Fleet, U.S. Naval Command, Southern Command. The most important part of my biography is that my service began aboard USS Rodney M. Davis, FFG 60. My first deployment to the Arabian Gulf was in December of 1989. When the memory of these events were still very fresh on our minds. And on that day, 17 May, the whole team had finished another day at sea. It's 2200. And we all know what happens at 2200 on every warship at sea. Those words that many of us have heard thousands of times, the taps taps, lights out, all hands, turn into your bunks, maintain silence about the decks. Not 15 minutes later, everything changed, everything changed for that ship and all who sailed in her. 29 people never again heard Reveille and eight more succumbed later. We can never forget the nature of our business. And most importantly, today we come together to always honor, remember, and understand the sound of Reveille that their sacrifice gave to each of us. And I thank all of you for participating and for remembering. God bless those sailors. God bless our families, our Navy, and each of you. Thank you for being a part of this important day. Captain Jason Canfield, a Floridian, is a University of Central Florida graduate, was designated a Naval Flight Officer in 1997. In addition to his regular duties aboard ship and ashore, Captain Canfield has accumulated over 2,000 flight hours. To put that number in perspective, a normal work year for a civilian, working 40 hours a week, 52 weeks during the year, only works 2,080 hours. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Canfield, Commanding Officer, Naval Station, Mayport, Florida.
Hey, good morning, everyone. First off, uh, how do you follow a, a superb fleet commander like uh, Admiral Gableson? Uh, uh, it's a challenge, uh, and I'll, I'll do my best, but uh, uh, great remarks from the Admiral, and uh, I appreciate uh, everyone here coming together today as we remember the USS Stark and the tragedy that happened 34 years ago today. I'd like to thank uh, Captain uh, Pete Weinkoop, uh, former commanding officer of the USS Stark uh, and the close relationship he has, as well as the Naval Order with uh, Naval Station Mayport and the coordination, the hard work that goes into this. Um, great job. To the Color Guard and the Honor Guard, uh, you all make it look good. And to all my shipmates from uh, Naval Station Mayport. But most importantly, I'd like to thank the families that suffered the tragedy, again, 34 years ago today, May 17, 1987. The pain and the anguish that you have felt and had to work through, I can't begin to imagine. I, I can't even begin. Words are not enough. It's a tragic day. Two errant missiles that should have never been fired at the USS Stark, in fact were, and you can't undo that. The scars are permanent. What I can do is offer you my continued strength, I should say prayers for strength and healing for the wounds that you've suffered. Stay strong. In our country, we do a pretty good job, in my opinion, um, memorial memorializing um, these events that happen um, in the wars and the scars of the past. The Vietnam Memorial, the Korean Memorial, the 9-11 Memorial in Washington, D.C., the World War II Memorial, and in fact, in Atlantic Beach, uh, thanks to Mayor Glasser um, for having us here at this uh, Veterans Memorial Park. We couldn't have a gathering of this size on base at the normal Stark Memorial Park um, due to COVID, but we look forward to one year from today bringing the Stark Memorial event back to Mayport. So thanks for uh, Atlantic Beach uh, and hosting this right now. So post-pandemic, we know where we're gonna be, and maybe we'll even have the uh, Southeast Region Band uh, ne next year, excuse me. We didn't quite get them this year. But so often as uh, we hear this time of year, as we approach Memorial Day, uh, freedom has a price and every generation pays its due. 34 years ago today, the Sons of America on board the USS Stark and their families paid that price. From Naval Station Mayport, we are forever grateful and we remember. Thank you. To follow on, I would like to recognize the Honorable Ellen Glasser, Mayor of Atlantic Beach. Thank you for being here. is the Honorable Christine Hoffman, Mayor of Jacksonville Beach. Thank you. Now I'd like to call forward Mr. Art Conklin. I was asked to Actually, we all got an email from Captain Pete saying, would you like to talk about how your life has changed since? And I said, sure, but I have to back up just a step because how did it start? My father was the chief petty officer. And when I left college, I didn't know what I was gonna do, make a living, whatever. He said, go in the Navy. You'll learn to lead men, manage a budget. And I had no idea what that meant. So I showed up as a baby ensign. Thank you to all my shipmates who turned me into, from a baby ensign, into somebody that was functional and knew more than just the pointy end and the flat end. And over the course of the four years that I was on board, a lot of things seeped in from my Navy family. Character. We talk about heroes, but it's all based on character. And today, when people ask me, well, what was it like then? And 
they have all these questions and they don't understand the reason they don't understand well first of all if they've been in the service i find out instantly i have friends that were serving the gulf war and it's like that they understand it all fits but for people who have not served they have this disconnect between sacrifice why would you go die why would you go do these things and none of us signed up to go do that i'm pretty certain it's kind of like the airplane safety thing they tell you all the things about this airplane da, da, da. look if we thought it was going to do that we wouldn't be on the flight today okay but again it's about character and the character sense has told me when someone tells me this is a life or death situation sir you've got to fix this i look at them and realize no been there done that have that t-shirt understand that and this doesn't rise to that occasion but then they say well sacrifice for this or sacrifice for that and then i suddenly realize what sacrifice really is and i've since realized that the important part is we're all one part of one big family it's not just the stark family it's what the navy turned us into as a family we're shipmates and we're instantly we may have different points of view I may vote differently than you. I may think differently about this referendum or that referendum, whether it should be stoplight cameras, red light cameras, all these things, it doesn't matter. Because at the end of the day, we all have the same character that was built in the crucible of the United States Navy. And then it was tested on that day. And I often think about those that did not come home. And I realize that they're just ahead of us now, waiting for us when we get there. They've paved the way. Each of us will have our own time. Each of us will have our own opportunities and our choices. And if we use our character and make the best of our choices as we go forward, then we'll live up to the ideals that we're supposed to be. Thank you. See if we can get that uh, microphone a little bit closer. Um, next, I'd like to call Mr. Mike Palumbo. Hi, good morning. Can everyone hear me? I, I got a big mouth anyway, so, you know, I probably really don't need this. I should probably step away from the microphone. But Art, as we were passing over here, Art said, can we both make it by? I said, yes, this is a little wider than a ship passageway. So this has grown as, as we've grown. Uh, uh, before I start, I want to point out one thing Bernard Martin said. He said something about us getting older, and then I realized when the Admiral came up, I said, you know, you can look at a rear Admiral and say, that looks like a young guy. You, you are getting older, you know? So, uh, on a serious note, I do want to correct one thing, because I, I don't really want any misrepresentation not that this was uh, done intentionally, but I wasn't on the ship in 87. I'm a plank owner. Just want to make that clear to anyone that, that doesn't know. It says 87, but I was already out. I got out in 85. And... Um, for my uh, good shipmate, ben, friend, Ben Starkey, who can't be here today. I also was not the dispersing clerk. Ben Starkey is a dispersing clerk. I'm sure he's going to be watching this, and he might get the program. And uh, I know we're hard to confuse. We've always got that, you know, magnetic personality. So I understand why, why there was a mistake made. Um, uh, so, on, uh, and, you know, to talk about the impact that this has had on my life, um, I go back to, um, so... <sighs> On my mother's side, I have an uncle. His name is Carmine Ferrara. Uh, Ferrara, and um, in the late '30s and early '40s, he was he was a pretty big deal. Of course, he was a big deal in my family because he's my uncle. But he was a professional boxer, and between his amateur and professional record, he had over 152 fights. And um, being an Italian American back in the '30s and, and '40s, we were still more of a uh, a new ethnic group, and um, he was very famous back then. And he, um, he did a lot of outreach work with Fiorella LaGuardia, who was the mayor of New York City at the time. Him and Joe DiMaggio did work together, you know, for the, to further Italian-American causes. And um, he was drafted into World War II, and unf unfortunately he was killed in 1945 in the Battle of the Bulge. I never met him. None of my first cousins ever met him. And, 
I wasn't born until the early 60s. And so I really didn't exactly know who he was until maybe 10 years later, like 25, 30 years later, my aunts, my mother, my uncles are, you know, telling me about Uncle Carmine. And he was always sort of a James Dean type character, die too young, cool guy, die too young. But every time anyone of my aunts or uncles or my mother ever, you know, told us about him, especially my uncle Nicky, who was actually a plank owner of the Seabees, um, their voice would always trail off like it's changed the family for his, but him, him being killed, it's changed the family forever. You know, we haven't been the same. And I could never understand that because it was perfectly a good family to me. I mean, a nice, nice family, you know, you know, we're regular people. I couldn't understand that until 34 years ago. Um, you know, when, when I got the news, I was in my backyard. It was my sister's birthday, and um, we were having a little party. And, you know, it just the world came in on you. And, you know, it, it's... It was a horrible time here, as, as the captain ex expressed. He was 100% right. And, um, and under, unfortunately, now I understand fully what my family went through, um, losing my Uncle Carmine in combat. And, you know, you know our, our shipmates, they made the ultimate sacrifice. But it was a single sacrifice. And what the way it's, it's changed me is that their battle is over, but our battle as the, as the family members, as the brothers, as the fathers, as the wives of the, uh, of the men who were killed, you know, we die thousands of deaths every, almost every day. It could be every day, but you know, our, like the captain said, our sacrifice is ongoing and, and for, forever. So what the way it's changed me is I've really come to understand the horrors of war and combat and the sacrifice, the true sacrifice. I mean, yes, obviously our 37 sailors and my shipmates are gone, but the, the continuing sacrifice of the family members that never end. And the second way, it's really this whole incident. Of course, we'd rather have them here with us. I think Ronald Reagan literally said that, but they're not. And being associated with the ship and being, you know, associated with, with the Navy, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely proud of our, of, of our shipmates, not just the ones that lost their lives, but the ones that came after us and saved the ship and saved a lot more lives. I'm, I'm proud of their actions and I'm proud of the Navy. And, you know, before it happened, I've been out for two years, I was proud of my Naval service, but it, it's made me much more proud of not just being in the military, but being in the Navy. And it's made me much more proud of not just being in the Navy, but being part of the, of the surface fleet. Because, and I'm gonna leave you with this, they've died, they're gone, but they're not gone. A human dies two deaths. One, when they actually die. The second one is when everyone around them forgets they were ever here. And thanks to um, the, um, the order of, I never forget, order of naval, thanks to these guys and the Navy, <laughs> and the United States Navy, um, our shipmates, their, their legacy is weaved in, in United States history. They, they are very important people. They are, they're extremely important. Look, they had a sitting president eulogize them. You know, that's a very rare occasion. And in a hundred years from today, at the 134th memorial service when we're all gone there's going to be a memorial service dedicated to them not just from civilians but from the united states navy and and makes me it gives me an immense sense of pride in our in our shipmates and in the united states navy and in the civilian organizations that support the uh, the united states navy so our shipmates our family members are not here with us today but they will be with us in all perpetuity thank you I'd also like to uh, recommend, uh, recognize at this time the mayor of Jacksonville, Representative, Mr. Bill Spann, Commander, USN, retired. Back to the back. Thank you. 
The tolling of the bell today will be done by Mr. James Pear, sonar technician, USS Stark. Seaman Doran Boldick. Bosemate First Class Bradley Brown. Fire Control Technician Third Class Jeffrey Calkins. Seaman Mark Cowett. Bosemate Third Class John Saletta. Seaman Brian Kleinfelter. Operation Specialist Third Class, Antonio Daniels. Electronic Technician Second Class, Chris DeAngelis. Interior Communication Technician Third Class, James Dunlap. Sonar Technician Seaman, Stephen Irwin. Raiderman Second Class, Jerry Farr. Senior Chief Quartermaster, Vernon Foster. Raiderman Seaman Apprentice, Dexter Grissett. Fire Control Technician, Third Class, William Hansen. Gunner Made Second Class, Daniel Homicki. Operation Specialist Seaman, Kenneth Janusik. Operation Specialist, First Class, Stephen Kendall. Senior Chief Electrician Mate, Stephen Kaiser. Sigmund First Class, Ronnie Lockett. Gunner Mate First Class, Thomas McMullen. Electronic Warfare Technician Third Class, Charles Muller. Seaman Apprentice, Jeffrey Phelps. Data System Technician First Class, Randy Pierce. Gunner's Mate Third Class, James Plonsky. Electronic Technician Third Class, Kelly Quick. Signalman Seaman, Earl Riles. Fire Control Technician, Senior Chief, Robert Shippey. Signalman Seaman, Jeffrey Sibley. Operation Specialist, Third Class, Lee Stevens. Torpedoman's Mate, Second Class, James Stevens. Electronic Warfare Technician, Martin Supple. Fire Control Technician, First Class, Jeff, uh, excuse me, Gregory Tweedy. Seaman Vincent Ulmer. Electronic Warfare Technician, Third Class, Joseph Watson. Electronic Technician, Third Class, Wayne Weaver II. Operation Specialist, Seaman. Terrence Weldon. Interior Communication Technician Third Class, Lloyd Wilson. The families and Captain Robert Whitcup will now conduct laying of the wreath.
Chaplain Suitors will now pronounce the benediction. Let us pray. Eternal Father, strong to save, whose arm hath bound the restless wave. We're glad to hear those comforting words as we pause to give you thanks once again, O Lord, as we conclude these moments of honoring the crew, the memory and the sacrifice of our fallen shipmates. President Ronald Reagan said it best in his eulogy, ours is a love for fallen countrymen who died so that we, a free people, might live and this great nation endure. So today we remember their deeds and ultimate sacrifice as they faithfully served their country as they stood the watch. Amen. This concludes our ceremonies. Thank you all for attending. One more note, please. For those of you local, a reminder that there will be a Memorial Day service at this park on uh, Monday, uh, May 31st. Thank you. Thank you.